So Google finally released the new AppScript IDE, the integrated development environment where we do all our work. Uh, and this is really wonderful news if you're an AppScript developer, because the old editor that we've used for years and years and years is really showing its age. And this new one, it's based on uh, Monaco VS Code, and it's really, really fantastic. So in this video, I want to show you around and just give you a quick tour uh, and hopefully um, impart some of my enthusiasm <laughs> onto you so you can go out and check it out and uh, really up your coding game in AppScript. So here we go. So this is what I want to show you today. Just a bunch of different stuff, uh, grouped sort of into like the yellow ones here, the sort of visual things we'll look at, then some blue ones about accessibility, how everything's now in one place for you. In red there, just you have a much better debugging environment and logging environment. In green, some really powerful um, tools to work with your code, to search for things, to make variable name changes on globally and things like that. And then finally, a couple of uh, this amazing palette editor and one super awesome, uh, fun, high contrast mode. So we'll look at all of these uh, in due course. So let's dive in to our app script editor. So here we are. So this is the legacy editor, the old editor. I just wanted to start here so you could see what it looks like and nothing wrong with it, but it's, it's showing its age, it's old. It doesn't have half the functionality of the new one. So let's go in and see the new editor and um, see how much uh, cleaner it is to work with. So I'm gonna click the button, use new editor. And here we are folks, here's the new editor and done away completely with that top menu bar. Things are just available right here now. Uh, it's really nice and clean looking. Uh, you have your files, your libraries, your services all here, and uh, the menu over here. So, so it's clean, it's really um, nice to look at and easy to use. So second of all, you have now these nice visual cues. So for example, these lines here to give me my tab indentation lines, it's really helpful, especially with things like this if else statement just to show you where the blocks of code are. And speaking of blocks of code, we also have this ability to hide blocks of code now. So if, for example, I finish with this function, I can just hide that and it really uh, makes my code much easier to work with when your files get big. Once you've written a function, you know it's working, just go and hide it and then it's not showing up and, and um, getting in the way of seeing the other code pop that back out. So that's just next to those buttons there. Another thing that you might do, let me just say if I've messed up my, my spacing in this um, somewhat, then what I can do is right click and format the document and it will fix those formatting. It put those back together uh, to, the, to the right tab indentation for me. So that's really nice, really handy if um, you know, you're struggling to get those indentations all done properly. Now, the next thing is it has a really rich auto complete now. So let me show you that. So just start typing. Let's do a get range. So here it comes up. I'm going to tab to complete. When I start the bracket, it brings up the full uh, one. And it always, it's really nice because get range, especially, I can never remember whether it's rows, columns, and blah, 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 which order it goes in. So say we start typing one row, one column. It's bolding which, which one I'm up to. If I add another column, it moves on to the next one. And then finally, it tells me as well, which the full picture of the, the get range there with the row, column, number of rows and number of columns. It's just really super handy when you're learning. It gives you information as well down here about the context that you're using it in. So let's just finish that off um, and actually just delete that now. But there we go. So really rich, also complete. That's really nice to see. So moving on, that was all the visual stuff. Um, the Next sort of bucket I was looking at was accessibility. And this is really important. And I think this is a huge improvement. The team's done a fantastic job of making things accessible. So first off, over on the left-hand side here, I have my menu. It just pops up when I hover over. I now don't have to go back to my app script dashboard or anything like that. I can get the overview of my project right here. You know, the executions, the error rate, who's using it, et cetera, et cetera. And it's still within my project. I haven't moved to the global dashboard anymore. 
I'm staying inside the project to get back to my code. Go straight to the triggers for this one. And again, I'm sticking within my project. I'm not in the global triggers um, area anymore with all of my triggers. I'm just still focusing on this project. So it's really nice. It's really easy to maintain and manage and run this project right from, from this one um, window here. My execution log for this project again, super useful uh, and uh, a really, uh, really nice to see it available right here. And then finally, I have the project settings um, down here. So back to the editor. The next thing is now my libraries, my, my libraries if I'm using any, and the advanced services are available right here. They're not buried in the menu. I always used to, when I was learning out script, it was um, a real struggle for me to understand what the services were about. And, and because it was buried in that menu, it sort of seemed like something really small and not so, such an important thing and insignificant, et cetera. Now it's here up front and center. You can grab it. You can add your other services, for example, like BigQuery very easily and just pop it in and uh, it's just going to add that service for me. It's super easy. There we are. And it just shows up. So you know, Excel accessibility is huge and they've done a tremendous job. Finally, within this sort of accessibility bucket, the deployment now is, is um, all in one place and nice and easy to manage and run and test your deployments here. So that's really nice to see as well. Okay, so running, when we run our um, programs now, let's put a console login, a logger.log even, and see what happens. So do a logger.log with val, say, and then now you can use console.log as well. Uh, and the reason that's nice is if you've come in from a JavaScript background or you're just bringing code across from JavaScript and it has console.logs in, they show up now as well in your logs. So we run and it pops up this execution log immediately. We don't have to go and find it in a menu. So again, as a beginner, really, really handy because you just get to see uh, what's going on in your program um, straight off. You get that instant feedback. The debugging is better as well. So let's put a breakpoint in. So I come over to the left of my numbers. I'm going to click that button to put the purple in. And what the debugger does is it just pauses the code at that point in time, tells me what the values of all the different things are. So let's debug, run the debugged one. Over here, tells me where I'm up to on the call stack and gives me the variables. Uh, so there they are, the values of the two variables I've declared at this point in time. Obviously a lot more detail as well. So then I can just hop over it, step in, step out, uh, and resume and do all the usual stuff. So the debugger is a huge improvement as well, really nice to work with. So that's the better logging, better debugging. Now let's look at some of the new power features that uh, we have here in the, the new editor. So when I right click now inside of the app script window, it brings up developer help, not just the usual cut and paste, but actually some really helpful stuff for developers. So let me just show you a, a few things here. So we have a really nice um, code search. So for example, so let's say I'm down here in my code. I see threshold val, not sure what it is. I can right click and say, go to definition. And it takes me back to where that definition, where it's defined. Similarly, I can click, I can say to take a peek at the definition and it actually pops open a sort of inline window and tells me where it's defined uh, and gives me and shows me where it is in the code where it's defined. I can just close that down. So it's got some really, um, powerful code search tools there. That was just a little glimpse of what's there. There's a lot more to it than that. Uh, so again, really helpful when you get bigger, more complex projects. Now, another nice thing actually I want to show you is perhaps I want to rename this, um, this variable, but that always is a dangerous thing to do in, in, in your code because, you know, you could easily miss one and then it will cause you all sorts of nightmares trying to debug it and figure out why your code's not working. What we can do now is just when I'm clicked on it, right click, rename that symbol as threshold value, let's say, hit enter, and it renames it everywhere. So down here and up here, it changes that value everywhere for me. So that's really, really handy. Then the other thing I can right click, I have this command palette. It's also available on F1 on the hotkey. So this is the command palette. This is really, really powerful sort of, I have a go to, if I want to go to a certain line or a problem, uh, there's a tremendous amount inside this um, for developers, which is really awesome to see. Uh, one thing I'm going to show you 
just to finish off a nice um, a, a nice touch here from the team was to give us a high contrast mode. So if you prefer to work in the dark mode editor like this, then you can do it. So that's awesome to see. Great, so that was a whiz around the new editor. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you're as excited as I am to jump in and start using all these awesome new features we have suddenly. Uh, and really, I think it's gonna help everyone from whether you're a beginner and you know the, the, the auto rich autocompletes and things like that will be super helpful right through to a more seasoned professional developer. Uh, your, your life will just be easier because you have a more powerful suite of tools available and things are easier uh, and, and more accessible. So lots of great features. Um, dive in and um, have a great day.